Hi all, welcome to Exam Chala. In this video, we are going to see some important news and editorial analysis of 1st March 2021. But before we get started, kindly do subscribe our channel on YouTube, follow us on Exam Chala, Instagram channel, Facebook and Telegram. Now let's get started. Now we are going to see four sections of news. They are basically from science and technology, agriculture, medical science and environment. The first science and technology aspects are used in Amazonia 1, that is a kind of satellite that has been launched by ISRO and second is the UN satellite. We'll see what is the difference and what are their important news and how it is going to be covered in the coming GPSC and UPSC exams. And secondly is the Operation Green. It is basically based on the top culture. We'll see what is the top culture. Now Johnson & Johnson and versus Pfizer medicines, their vaccines, their uses, their differences, their benefits, okay, and their shortcomings. We've all seen them. And the last one is the decarbonization process. Then what is decarbonization? How we are going to achieve it and what it will take and how it is going to affect our coming environment in the coming days so all three four topics we are going to discuss one by one so let's get started first topic now the PSLV has launched the Brazilian satellite that is Amazonia 1 it is a kind of a remote sensing satellite which is sun synchronous in nature we'll see what is sun synchronous geosynchronous and geostationary three types of satellites how it has been categorized in the next slide but before that just get the news and another is the pixel India that is a Bangalore based organizations has also developed a satellite called Anand but due to some technical failures it was not able to get launched with the same vehicle it was also getting launched together with the Amazonia 1 in the PSLV that is Polar Satellite Launch Vehicle C51 but due to some technical failures it got stranded in between so we'll see why it got stranded and what was its news and how it can be useful and how the prelims based question can be asked from this topic so Amazonia 1 it is what a 637 kg commercial satellites which was completely full fledgedly operated by INPE that is Indian New Space okay limited space enterprise and it is with it has been organized by the it is a commercial arm of ISRO and that is why the amount of FDI that has been given by the government in the space sector in the space diplomacy and the soft diplomacy that is going to help the bridge the relationship between Brazil and India and it is going to earn a revenue as far as the antrix it is also an commercial arm of the ISRO and this INPE it is also a commercial arm of the ISRO and this was the key organization or the key institution under the ISRO which has been given the full-fledged control of organizing and launching the Brazilian Amazonia 1 satellite which was the first indigenous satellite of Brazil now why it is was going to be used and why it is important so it was launched from Satish Dhawan Center at Sri Harikota Andhra Pradesh now it is the first indigenous satellite of Brazil which is predominantly destined for monitoring the deforestation as well as agricultural process in the Amazonian region. We know that whole equatorial, equatorial Amazonian region is a very vast tree reserve of Brazil. It is called the lungs of the world and that is why they are going to check this deforestation and allowing some agricultural monitoring with the help of this remote sensing satellite in the sun synchronous orbit. Now there are two important terms here. One is the remote sensing satellite. So that the word remote sensing itself defines that something which is remote that is not physical. So without having a physical contact with anything or with that object we are sensing it that is we are getting information from it and this is known as the policy of remote sensing. It is basically used for mineral exploration, research purpose and seeing the different layers of the earth and basically extraction of the minerals and the sea magnesium nodules inside the sea. So remote sensing satellites is nothing but a kind of a survey satellite and it is a bit different from the surveillance satellite that has been used for the military and the spying purpose the purpose between them is to surveillance that is to continue monitor where the remote sensing satellite is covering a vast area it has to cover a vast area whereas the surveillance satellite has to cover a very small area but constantly work in the very small area and the remote sensing satellite will have to cover a vast area and to cover all the area so these are the basic differences and we'll see why the orbit that is sun synchronous geosynchronous as well as geostationary how it is going to be different and what are the difference between the three orbits. Now here you can see that this is the geostationary orbit. It is exactly in the inclination with the equatorial orbit. So, okay. So this is the geostationary orbit. We know that our earth is tilted in its axis and this parallel with the equator is known as the geostationary orbit. Similarly, the orbit which is at 90 degree that is passing through the poles or with the equator is known as the polar and its opposite is known as the sun synchronous orbits. Sun synchronous orbits is also at a particular distance but it is destined to a particular place so that it can monitor the whole place in a round. That is why if you see the differences, the difference is the geostationary satellites covers a same path and it almost travels along the same path. So if you want to see a particular path in a particular region and if you want a kind of a surveillance satellite then it needs to be a geosynchronous and if you want a remote sensing research based exploratory satellites then it is going to be a sun synchronous satellite. 
Okay, now let's move on to the Anand satellite. Anand satellite was being developed by the Bangalore based startup called Pixel India, but due to some technical lags at the last moment, it was not being attached to the PLC 51, that is PSLV C51 launcher. And so it is in news. So there might be some questions that where is the Pixel India located and why it was designed for? So it was designed for high resolution imaging of the agricultural field, climate change monitoring, and as well as urban planning. Now the next project is on the project in slow motion, that is the project green. Recently, in the budget speech, the finance minister has announced that she is going to include 22 more crops in the project green apart from the three crops that is TOP, tomato, onion and potato. She is going, uh, the government is going to add 22 more crops. And so in that case, in this scenario, in this context, the author is actually evaluating the initial top project, its shortcomings and providing some solutions. So we'll see it one by one. So what is what was Operation Green? It was launched by Mr. Anuj Jetli in 2018 under the Food Processing Ministry. Okay, so basically it was concerned with the price stabilization of the three important products. As you know, that this TOP, tomato, onion, potato are used on a daily basis in kind of an every single household in most part of the India. And that is why we need a constant and stable supply without any fluctuation of the prices in these products. So this scheme was designed to store these excessive products, excessive farm producers of this top cultivation in order to provide a opportunity or kind of a solution to post harvest storage losses. So they were designed to have warehouses, old storage, etc transportation mobility collectivity logistics were allowed to be invested more infrastructure was allowed to be made in the reciprocal area by the ppp model so that the post harvest of these top crops was used to be stored and the price fluctuation and around year supply that is continuous supply around the year was to be ensured by this scheme but actually it didn't happen that we have seen recently the price of onion was touching the sky and now it is coming down also so this the basic aim of this scheme that was to ensure the minimum fluctuation has not been successful and the author is saying why it is not been successful that we'll see in the coming slides okay now the solution is why was it not successful so it was not successful because it didn't have a fixed technocrat heading it the bureaucrats who were heading this kind of a scheme and overseeing this whole project were having a less technical know-how of this area and that is why what happened is due to the unavailability or unconstant nature of their posting they used to get posted or promoted in the coming times so there was not stagnation or not continuity in the process of heading the department and that is why it was left alone like a, any other scheme which causes the very loss of the purpose of the scheme which was allowed to maintain the fluctuation the prices of these top crops secondly it was not given the proper reluctance or chances the selection of the choices of the cold storages warehouses were highly being politically motivated and were based on the political clouds or the voting importance of these regions irrespective of seeing the compatibility logistics and the area sufficiency so in order to tackle these problems the solution is given by the author is we need to have a fixed technocrat kind of a person to overseeing these kind of projects just like dr Vergis kurian who was in the in charge of the amul unit and amul made a success and we also need to give some time also amul made success in the coming distant 10 to 15 years but it took some time to get its opportunity at the top and then we launched the operation flood and now india is a food sufficient milk sufficient so that is why we have to give some time as well as investment along with that fixed technocrat kind of a mechanism or an overseeing body that will lead to complete manufacturing and overseeing this project along with the final implementation now also we need to be more sensible in the selection of the storage locations mobility locations connectivity locations so this is the solution that the author is trying to suggest in it now we'll move to the next topic that is a comparison between the pfizer and the johnson and johnson jj medicine now what are the basic source of comparison johnson and johnson is a single shot vaccine we know that the news we have been watching that we have to take two shots of these vaccines that pfizer co-vaccine even covid shield moderna but this johnson and johnson is a single shot vaccine why because it is made from the double standard dna adenovirus Double standard DNA adenovirus is a prototype of those virus, but having a double stand in comparison to the Pfizer and the Moderna virus vaccines, that is, it is having a single standard. And that is why its longevity is more. So it can be stored up to three months in between two to eight degrees Celsius. Whereas Pfizer is very sensitive and it can only be stored below zero degrees Celsius. And in the same case for the Moderna as well. Now, since the efficiency of Pfizer is more, that is, it is 95% in comparison to Johnson & Johnson of that is 72%. So there has been debate among the countries, especially in the South America and the Europe, that which vaccine we should allow. But in case of Asia, Pfizer may get a negative chance because of the high temperature regions. And that is why the author is going to compare which vaccine will be useful in the African countries and the later Asian countries. So what for our exam purposes, we need to understand that Johnson & Johnson is a double standard DNA vaccine and Pfizer and Moderna are the single standard RNA that is ribonucleic acid acid and it's deoxyribonucleic acid standard 
vaccine and the longevity that is the sustainable period of the moderna vaccine or pfizer vaccine is less in comparison to the johnson and johnson vaccine now the last topic is the road to decarbonization now what is decarbonization decarbonization is the process of reducing the amount of carbon in the environment especially by the anthropogenic means the means by which the humans are adding the carbon not the natural carbon because carbon itself has a cycle in the nature and it gets consumed as well as emerges as well as produced in the same manner in a controlled chain manner that is also important it is not like that carbon is only wasteful it is important very much things but due to the extra anthropogenic activities by the human beings industries vehicles medicines plants we are adding more and more carbon that can be consumed by the nature so we are increasing the amount of destination or rather the kind of the concentration then it used to be utilized in the atmosphere and that is why the net carbon is increasing and with the increase in carbon since the carbon is having the capacity to withhold the heat carbon is having the capacity to withhold the heat and that is why the average temperature of the earth atmosphere in the lower atmosphere gets increases and this is called the greenhouse effect so what we are trying to do is we are trying to decarbonize how by reducing the amount of carbon through the anthropogenic means so decarbonization policy includes zero carbon emission policy less fossil fuel use that is coal petroleum products should be used in a less and competitive manner similarly electric vehicle promotion promoting the electric vehicles will lead to a substantial or significant decrease in the fuel kind of a carbon dioxide sulfur dioxide nitrogen dioxide in the atmosphere and that will make the total in the net carbon footprint of a person to a reduced level focusing more on the electricity generated through solar as well as wind not by thermal so since the thermal electricity is more and more carbon outsourcing it is based on the burning of the coal and that leads to the co2 increase in the atmosphere so we are trying to more and more shift towards the electricity that is generated through the natural means that is by the hydroelectricity or the solar electricity and the wind electricity now what are the obstacles in the process of achieving a decarbonization on the world first is poor planning that we on paper are designing good plans but at the implementation level this planning are very much poor also there is a faulty and inefficient regulatory mechanisms that is nobody is regulating or the regulatory bodies are not in sufficient manner or not in sufficient power to check on the kind of regulations or if there someone is non compliant with the emission protocols there is no such any stringent actions to be taken and that is why the regulation is not as per the demand as we need it lack of investment in the clean and green energy especially by the private players these clean and green projects are mostly been included in the government policies and government infrastructure project but the private projects or the private parties are not willing to expand not willing to invest in these kind of projects as the income or the result or the benefit is not as high as in other projects similarly what we need to do is more interstate and interlevel and interconnected level that is connecting at the interstate that is coordination between the states in the country connection of the countries in the continent and intercontinental level also that is a global level coordination to work in a coordinated manner in order to culminate the rise of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere so that we can move our alliance to a carbon neutral world that is government plus corporates plus financial institutions ngos and global organizations together will fall and make a combination of alliance that will lead to a carbon neutral world and this carbon neutral world what will actually do it will reduce the global average temperature and since when the global average temperature will come down the excessive heat effects or the important hazards that were used to be done or that was the reason behind excessive droughts in somewhere avalanches in somewhere loss of monsoon flash floods these all climatic hazards that was the result of excessive global rise in the temperature okay irregularity in the monsoonal cycle irregularity in the seasonal cycle that will all come down and that will be a good or that will also have some economic impacts because these economic or these natural hazards had a large huge economic impacts on the people and since this the project or the alliance will come down will bring down the amount of carbon in the earth atmosphere that will indirectly decrease the amount of heat and which will bring down the constituency or the frequency of the natural hazards giving both environmental as well as economic benefit to the world so that was for today's video kindly do follow our channel to get some more updates more videos and more analysis thank you have a nice day